The Bethune-Cookman men's basketball team has a story to tell. Look out. Oh! It's a beautifully executed alley-oop for Jacoby Heading. They've battled every team in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Catch and shoot from the corner. No good. Tip in. Yes! Jacoby Heady with the tip. They have amazed us with last-second performances. Oh, stolen! Dyson Stop in out. the corner! Oh! And now, Coach Reggie Theus and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats are ready to take on the SWAC in the SWAC tournament in Birmingham, Alabama. This afternoon, the number five seed, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, are ready to be giant killers as they take on the number one seed, the Grambling State Tigers. And now, let's go to the arena with the voice of the Wildcats, Mike Torello and Henson White. Live from Bartow Arena in Birmingham, Alabama, on the Cat Eye Radio Network. Well, there was rain in the early part of the morning here in central Alabama. We hope it is raining buckets for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats here today. It's the semifinals of the 2024 Starry SWAC Men's Basketball Championship presented by Buick live from Bartow Arena in downtown Birmingham on the campus of UAB. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Torello. Happy to have your company. Henson White is alongside me. And Henson, we are where no BCU team has gone before beyond the first round of the SWAC tournament. Well, when you put it like that, it doesn't sound as impressive. But hey, it's the first time we're in, uh, in a semifinal. Obviously, it's a huge accomplishment for this program. It, you know freshly moved to the SWAC, kind of the new, along with FAMU, obviously, the new blood of the Southwestern uh, South <laughs> Athletic Conference. And it's going to be very interesting and very fun to see what this Wildcats team is going to do, obviously, on short rest due to a late, late night game last yeah, night. We tipped off at 8.30 local, 9.30 Eastern last night. We didn't get back to the hotel till almost midnight. Then the team had to get up this morning, get on the bus and get over here for a 2 p.m. tip against the team on a full day's rest because Grambling State played Thursday and beat Alabama State by six. So this is going to be a massive uphill battle tonight. Yeah, you can see it even in the players warming up, you know, Grambling much more loose, you know, joking around. Bethune-Cookman is all business. Everybody, you can tell the wear and tear of the season plus, you know, short night's rest really is, you know, affecting some of the guys. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they start this game out. It is now time for our Southeast Toyota dealers keys to the game. Henson, what do we got? So for BCU, their key is going to be get out to an early lead. Try to keep this game at an arm's distance because Grambling has that stamina, has the energy that the Wildcats won't have just because of that short rest. And it's going to be harder to play this game close late if everyone is already tired from that game before. For Grambling, it is going to be punish the post. You already have, you have an amazing post player in Aku who played really well against the Wildcats in both of their victories against, uh, for the Tigers rather. And the Tigers have beaten the Wildcats every time they played since 2022. So this is going to be a huge win if the Wildcats can pull it off tonight. Including beating BCU in the first round of last year's SWAC tournament. And they beat the Wildcats both times they played this year by nine in Grambling and then by 10 in Daytona Beach back in January. This, But to be fair, this is a completely different BCU men's team. They have found their stride, they've found their shooting form, and they found a leader on the floor in Deshaun Dyson who really hadn't stepped up until the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Deshaun, he he was a main player, but he wasn't the, the guy. You know, Harmon was obviously the guy, and then Harmon was out, and the team was kind of looking for a center at the same time. There was a lot of center by committee, and we're still doing that somewhat here, but we've kind of found our stride, found our place. Dyson has really taken up the reins of, of the main scorer of the team. Harmon coming back from this ankle injury is really laid off. Hetty has kind of taken up that second command off ball presence guy, which is what Dyson was before. So it's going to be very, you know, Wildcats have to start strong. You know, they, they don't have, they will not have the stamina to try to keep this game close or come back from a big deficit 
especially if Grambling plays well as they have against the Wildcats before. Yeah, and well, you mentioned Jacoby Hetty, and he is someone that has kind of fallen off the last couple of weeks of the season, but the Wildcats yesterday against Southern were at their best when Jacoby Hetty was attacking the rim. Yeah, I'm, that was the first time for the Wildcats we really saw them just go drive hard, drive hard, drive hard, you know. They would kick it if the look was open, but we weren't forcing up as many threes as we've seen throughout the season. But we might see that more due to this Grambling State defense. And just because players are tired, they're going to try to get a look early. And we've had Coach Theus on the broadcast talking about how sometimes the players will settle for a look, even though they could get a better one later in the possession. So hopefully they'll listen to him and try to work the ball around a little bit more. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the Grambling State Tigers. They come into the game 18 and 14. 14 and 4 in the SWAC. They're the number one seed. They're one of only two teams, the other being Alcorn State, to defeat the Wildcats at Moore Gymnasium this year. And then, of course, they won just a couple weeks ago, 69 60 in Grambling, Louisiana. And this is a team that was beaten in the SWAC finals last year by Texas Southern. They have a chip on their shoulder. They think it's their year to finally win it all. The Wildcats are going to have to try and stop them, and especially their kind of scoring by committee. Jonathan Aku, great in the post, but outside you've got Tremichael Moten, Contavious Dozier, and Terrence Lewis. We talk about BCU having the three-headed monster. That is their three-headed monster. Yeah, our three-headed our three -headed monster is kind of nursing an injury, so we're going to have to use uh, you know a lot more of our players uh ward did a great job seven up dj carter hollinger probably played his best game of the season in the quarterfinal but obviously aku's a big post presence and that's something the wildcats have struggled against both on the men's and women's side throughout the season and this grambling team comes in after losing in double overtime it comes in a tournament tournament rather against alabama state 87 84 and that could have been a punch in the mouth kind of a gut check reality check for them coming into this tournament and that might have been might be something we see them go to you know late well and also they had to play the same alabama state team in the quarterfinals they basically played them back to back four days apart which is really hard it, almost like a little three game series yep. right there but uh they beat them in the quarterfinals 56 to 50 in a game where neither team really looked good offensively but i think that's where grambling can be at their best right low scoring gritty defensive games whereas the wildcats we've said it ad nauseum if they're running and gunning, if they're getting out in transition and scoring a lot of points, they are favored in this game. Yes, I think if the Wildcats can get out to an early lead, if it's, if it's a run and gun type of game, but the only issue is we talked about this low stamina, we talked about this quick turnaround. We could see these players possibly gas if they play that run and gun style often. And if Grambling State recognizes that, they might try to match the Wildcats in tempo. Yeah. And then we might see some struggling there. So hopefully the Wildcats can get a pace that a rhythm that works for them we might see players that we haven't seen this tournament yet or haven't played extended minutes elijah Holsway might play much longer this game he only played 10 minutes uh, 10 minutes got six points and four rebounds in those 10 minutes had probably one of his best short performances of the season as well so a lot of players have been stepping up seneca hopefully ste you know steps up as well hetty we need these guys to lock in this is yeah. you know this is dyson's uh dj's McIntyre is possibly their last game in college and you never know what the transfer report all types of stuff so this, you know this might be your last game kind of thing and we talked to Deshaun Dyson before the quarterfinals yesterday and he said yes there is pressure on me to perform as a senior I don't want to go home I don't want this to be the end and he definitely stepped up yesterday with 20 points I'm looking for a big performance from Damani McIntyre he only had two points missed a couple of open looks um, especially from the free throw line so I'm looking for him to have a big game both offensively and defensively today yeah well, he was close again a couple of his trademark steals you know Bethune Cookman's leading stealer or steal guy. I don't know. You know. There should be a name for that, like an like an assister, but it's okay. But leading steal guy tried to get some steals, got tough fouls, but that's just how he plays. So hopefully the Wildcats don't get in foul trouble as we saw against Southern. But it might not. That might have been part of the game plan as Southern did not shoot well from the line, even though that kept them in the game. They did not shoot well from the line. That was your Southeast Toyota Dealers keys to the game. Visit your local Toyota Dealers or explore Toyota.com today to take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. Toyota, let's go places. Well, that was your pregame show. Both lineups have been introduced.
Welcome in to the booth cam for those of you watching on YouTube. Hello to the booth cam. And welcome to those of you listening in Daytona Beach on 1380 WELE, the cap. We've appreciated your patronage all season long and now all tournament long. Here we go. Hetty, Dyson, Ward, Willoughby, and Henderson, the same five that was on the floor last night. Four Bethune Cookman takes the field today. And it's Dozier, Smith, Aku, Burnett, and Moten on the floor for Grambling State. Bethune Cookman once again in the all black, like yesterday. Bethune in gold above gold numbers, Cookman in gold below. The VCU letter mark on the left leg and the cat head on the belt. Grambling State in all white, trimmed in gold and black. Grambling in bat black above the numbers, State below. Numbers are black, trimmed in gold. There is a chevron shape on the pants with Grambling written in gold going top to bottom and the Grambling State G on the right side of the pants as well. Bethune Cookman will go right to left. Grambling State will go left to right in this first half of action. It will be Jonathan Aku, the senior from Nigeria, to jump it up against the sophomore James Henderson Jr. from Miami. We staved off elimination once already. Can the Wildcats upset the apple cart and do it again? We are just waiting for ESPN to get their act together. We get the official jump. The referee has the ball in his hand. The ball is up. The tip is won by Bethune Cookman. And away we go. Here is Seneca Willoughby. He'll control out high, playing the point for the injured Zion Harmon. Goes to his right, guarded by Contavious Dozier. Dozier pressures him. Here is Deshaun Dyson, all the way up on top. Gets a screen, goes right to the wing. Back to the top for Ward. Reggie into a double team. Pulls up from 15 feet, splashes it down. 2 nothing Wildcats. Immediately a tough bucket out of Reggie Ward. And he's really stepped up in that, you know, in that quarterfinal. We might be saying the playoffs as a whole in a second. Yeah, here we go. Aku out on top. First offensive possession for Grambling State. 2 nothing Cats. 30 seconds gone by in the game. Controlling out high, Antoine Burnett. Hands to Tremichael Moten. Mo Moten goes right. Has the center switched on to him. And now back top to Smith to reset. Hands Do Dozier, Dozier drives the lane all the way to the bucket, layup too strong, while rebound grabbed by Willoughby. Cats hold defensively for the first time. Into the hands of Hetty, cross the time stripe in front of the Grambling State bench, out high right wing side. He dribbles, drives, penetrates, gets to the baseline, spins, goes up, puts up a floater. Oh yes, he got it. <laughs> it hung on the rim for a couple of seconds and finally dropped in for nothing Cats. Immediately a great start, 100% from the field, very quick baskets and they're trying to get out to that early lead as we said and if they keep playing well on defense as they have they might be in good shape to do that bounce pass to the post Aku against Henderson backing him down goes for the hook shot and it good that is going to be their best offense today as we said in the pregame show go down to Aku in the post he averages four, only 4.3 points a game but he's their best field goal percentage maker 56 on the squad. Willoughby controls out high. Two minutes gone by in the game. A 4-2 lead for Bethune Cookman. Hetty in the post. Now gets it back. Hetty at the nail. Double teamed. He does the turnaround jumper again. That time short on it. Rebound to Grambling State. They want to push the pace. Long pass in transition. Burnett has it all the way to the rim. Lays it up and in. 4-4. Four four. Little bit of uh, their own medicine was given to Cookman that time. Deshaun Dyson has his shot blocked on the baseline. It goes out of bounds, and it's Grambling State ball. And again, we talked about this with Coach and then in the pregame show, right? Don't take quick shots that are, are not good shots. Yeah, and that was not a good shot yeah, by Deshaun. Don't, don't force up a bad look. He kind of took it almost behind the basket and just couldn't get it around and hit the front of the rim and went out. So just a tough possession there. You got to take a little bit more time. Top of the key here for Grambling. Off to Burnett. All right, left-hand side, Moten. He's got it by Hetty. He'll back up, get a screen from Aku, go left. Here comes the switch. Double team six to shoot. Underneath Aku on the pick and roll ball, out of bounds. It'll stay with Grambling, but four on the shot clock on the baseline inbound. The switch was really tough there. Kind of two players went up to try to guard Burnett, and Aku was kind of open down low, and Reggie Ward did a great job ripping it out so he couldn't get the shot off. From the baseline into the basket, they attack to listeners right. Three to shoot. Dozier, step back three, short. 
Did that hit the rim? Side. Apparently it did. The ball goes out of bounds and it's Grambling ball. Yep, hit the side of the rim and it wasn't a good shot whatsoever. So he just kind of put it, it up. up there, yeah. Grambling gets lucky, gets a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Back to the top for Dozier after it rimmed around from Moten. Dozier against Dyson, goes left between the leg dribble. Dyson ripped it away from him. They go to the ground, it's a jump ball. Possession to Grambling State alternating. And another opportunity for the Tigers on this possession. Four to four, 17.01 to go in the first half. The offenses were flowing before the last two minutes, but eh, nobody has gotten it going over the last three or so. Yeah, and this is the kind of uh, possession that dictates how a game goes. If the Wildcats can hold them here, all of a sudden you had three bites at the apple and you couldn't get a basket, but it, if they can score here, it's kind of a gut punch for a Wildcats defense who's played really well in this possession. Nine to shoot, baseline in again for Grambling. Triggered, baseline jumper, no good. Rebound Reggie Ward, that shot was missed by Moten. Willoughby, across the time stripe, pushes it right hand wing to Hetty. Between the legs dribble, he'll back up and give it back to Seneca. Now Deshaun Dyson alone against Moten. Low block, and now an extra pass to Hetty at the nail. Head Hetty spins, goes up, gets fouled. Great move by Jacoby to get past Aku. Yep, spins around Aku, and we're gonna see who that foul gets called on. It's gonna get called on Moten. And obviously you want, if you're a Wildcats fan, you want these fouls to get on Aku or their big man early. Some of the, you know, so one of the best big men tandems here in the swack you're playing against, you want to get them as much of a non-factor as you can. First free throw good from Jacoby Henney. That's something the Wildcats did very well. Shot over 80% from the stripe yesterday in the win over Southern. That free throw broke a two and a half minute scoreless streak for the Wildcats, gives them a 5-4 lead. Hetty into his motion, got the second one. And now it is six to four, Bethune-Cookman, 16-40 first half. Dribbling it up, nonchalantly crossed the time stripe. Here's Moten, hands off Dozier, top of the key, crosses to Burnett. Burnett looking for the post up down low. Aku had the ball ripped away from him. Here goes Dyson, all the way coast to coast. He lays it up, it's no good. The ball gets carimmed out of bounds and it last touched Willoughby. And that's the defense of Jonathan Aku. He got all the way back and altered that shot. Yeah, I mean, he caught up with Deshaun Dyson, who's I'd probably bet money on him in a 40 yard dash, but did a great job of you know affecting his shot enough where he missed the layup. But he still, did a great job to get that steal. Yeah, still 6-4, Bethune-Cookman. First steal of the game for BCU. Unable to capitalize on it that time. You gotta get those points off turnovers. Here's Aku, top of the key. Floats it in front of us here at the media table to Burnett. And then Contavious Dozier drives the lane, goes up, lays it in. And it's 6-6. Six to six. Wildcats want to go fast. Quickly into the front court. To the lane. A lob. Hetty oh. missed it. Oh. Ward missed the putback. And Aku gets the rebound. Three good looks at that one for the Wildcats. They can't convert. Very, very quick possession for the Wildcats there, too. Try to answer back quickly. And now Grambling. Smith drives. Floats it. Aku pick and roll. Two hand jams. And that's the thing about the, you know, you come up on that screen they said. And you're, especially when you're uh, James Henderson Jr. is only 6'6", so he doesn't have the height to get back or at least reach back to try to get that block. So once he got blown by, it was kind of an easy basket for a coup who's basically touching the basket. 8-6 scrambling, 15-15 to go in the first half. Hetty left corner, drives baseline, kicks it back to Henderson. He bats it out of bounds, couldn't control the pass. It was too high. And that'll be the first media timeout. Eight to six, Grambling State, and the Tigers will be on the ball when we come back. This is the SWAC semifinals here on Canada Network Radio and 1380 WELE.
Back at the SWAC tournament here in Bartow Arena in downtown Birmingham, Michael Drillo, Henson White at the table with you. Grambling State has an 8-6 lead over Bethune Cookman at the first media timeout. They'll have the ball as well after the Wildcats have turned the ball over two straight times and have not hit a field goal in almost four minutes. But they're still only down two thanks to some gritty defense, but they gotta watch that pick and roll. They do, and the largest deficit that the Wildcats have faced this tournament was only four in that Southern game, so. Down low, spinning in the lane, putting the layup, and a block by Henderson. Burnett, three, no, long rebound goes to the corner, and out of bounds, it'll go to Bethune Cookman. Uh, Aku is out of the game. Jalen Johnson, the graduate student, 6'8 forward, is in. He tried to get that one to go and had it rejected by James Henderson, Jr. He did a great job to get that block to James, and Dyshawn did a great job of using his body to not allow Grambling State to get that board and getting basically a team rebound because he was cornered in the corner there. Low block, here's Reggie Ward, double teamed. He goes back to the corner, now spins baseline, kick out Seneca. He takes a running long two, he got fouled, and he'll go to the line. Shot was in and out, but more free throws coming for the Maroon and Gold. Yeah, but it's, it's very interesting, you know, I always like to see those kind of pull-up middies from players. People have gotten away from it since the, you know, 2000s and early 2010s. It's always nice to see someone take one off, up off the dribble. Was obviously got fouled, almost made it, but now he's at the line. Seneca Willoughby with the game winner in the final game of the regular season against Florida A&M. Hits the first free throw, pressed into service due to the injury to Zion Harmon down the stretch of this season. He's a sophomore from Philadelphia and a transfer from Contra Costa College out in California. Averaged 14 points and five boards his freshman season. He got both free throws and it's a tie ball game at eight, 14 and a half to go. Here in the first half, Wildcats in the all black, defending the basket to listeners right. Rambling in the white, crossing the time stripe Moten. He hands to Burnett out high and then around to the left hand side for Smith. Corner, triple, in and out. Unlucky for Contavious Dozier, but the Wildcats will take it. Hetty, back top of the key here is Dozier. Back, court, uh, back door pass to Hetty, and he stepped out of bounds. The ball was almost poked away from him by Jalen Johnson, and he stepped out of bounds nonetheless. So it's another uh, Bethune-Cookman turnover. This is unlike Bethune-Cookman, that they do not, um, they don't really turn the ball over that much. No, nope. and they didn't turn that ball that much either against Southern. Both teams were pretty good at keeping the ball as James Henderson gets a steal. Henderson in traffic. It's gonna be a jump ball as there's a pile of bodies at the free throw and line of Bethune-Cookman's basket. And that I'm was gonna, a great strip and I'm, Go ahead. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say that that's a foul call anywhere else. I don't know, he wrapped his arm James Henderson got the steal, and the Grambling State defender just kind of wrapped his arm and pulled him down and didn't get to the ball until they were both on the ground. And it's, it's pretty obvious that that's at least a reach, if not a transition take and possibly a flagrant, if I'm going to be honest. Because he was clean on a breakaway there. Wildcats inbound under the basket that they attack to listeners left. Ball goes into Ward on the low block. He, he steps, out. steps out of bounds again. Wow. Four turnovers for Bethune-Cookman early on, and they still haven't hit a field goal in the last five minutes, and yet it's a tie game at eight. And that's all down to the Wildcats' defense as they operate a press, much like Grambling State does themselves here, but they're really token pressure top of the key now. Here's Moten. He'll go left, round a screen, pull up, doesn't take the jump shot, pass it off to Smith. Round the key it goes. Dozier gets it back, drives against Hetty. Dozier moves all his way in, and he got oh fouled down God. the bucket. He hung in the air for what seemed like forever, and he's gonna get the foul call against Henderson. And that's one of those buckets you can't even be mad at as a fan, but Dozier has been the main guy, other than Aku, at least scoring-wise, in both of the losses for the Wildcats against Grambling State. You know, 70, in the 79-69 uh, loss early, the first one in the season, he scored 25, and Antoine Burton had 22. Dozier for the three-point play, it's good, and it's 11-8, Grambling State. That's the first foul Bethune-Cookman has committed. Grambling wants to show a little bit of pressure. They back off after the Wildcats get it in. Willoughby with his left-hand dribble, crosses the time stripe, flips it across to Ward, and then gets it back. Heels on the SWAC logo. 13-10. 
to play in the first half. Wildcats down by three, 11 to eight. Haven't hit a field goal in the last five and a half minutes. Ward goes left to the lane, puts it up, blocked by Jordan Smith. And Grambling on the ball again. Got to increase their three-point lead. Dozier against Dyson. Back to the top, it goes all the way to the left. Now baseline drive, kick back to the middle. Layup good from Jordan. And the Wildcats try to chase and try to do what they did against Southern and press and trap, but you can tell that the energy is getting to them as the, our own Magic City magician here in Birmingham, Zion Harmon and Elijah Holsway check into the game, uh, or looking to check into the game of the next time to play. Henderson back to Hetty, high left wing side. He's pressured by Moten, gets it back to Henderson. James drives, kicks to the corner. Three on the way, blocked by Dish, uh, Dyson, wanted to take the three, and Zahad Munford was all in his grill. Holsaway and Zion Harmon will check in for the Wildcats for the first time in the game. Did a good job there. Dyson did a good job of just not getting blocked or getting the uh, travel, because he was up and was holding the ball still, got, kind of got mushed and he just throws it out of bounds off of the defender. Zion the inbound, pulse away back up, top to Hetty, he tries a long three. Oh, it's in and out, but it was the end of the shot clock. Fighting for the rebound, it's loose on the paint, and Grambling State grabs it through Munford. So he gets the block and the board on that possession to Zahad Munford, the graduate student out of Dallas, Texas. Now Moten goes to his left, back to the top of the key. Jordan Smith drives against Ward, gets into the paint, and it's a reach and foul against Reggie Ward. Wildcats, O of their last seven from the field. And we've got the media timeout. Wildcats looking for something, anything on offense when we come back. This is Bethune-Cookman basketball on Cat Eye Network Radio and 1380 WELE. Bethune Cookman down in the semifinals, approaching halfway through the first half, 13 to eight in a low scoring contest, but the Wildcats haven't hit a field goal in over six minutes. And their only, their only points have been from the free throw line. They trail by five and Grambling State's going to the free throw line via Jordan Smith for two free throws to try and increase this lead. And both times we've played this team, it's been a 10 point deficit. Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to get to that early and one th one thing I do want to point out is that at the last media timeout Aku only had played four, you know, 4 minutes 50 seconds and he, you know, has been out of the game since the last one and still isn't back in, but it was it's very important for the Wildcats to win the minutes where he's not on the court. You want him to have a positive plus minus. You're going to expect that. He's going to make it hard for you in the lane as Grambling State, yeah. I think misses both. No, one of, one of two, 14 to eight. 
six point lead, largest deficit the Wildcats have faced in this entire tournament. They were only down by four at one point against Southern last night. Here's Zion Harmon, goes left, back to the top, Reggie Ward, and then back to Zion. He is face guarded by Dozier, goes left into a double team, pick and roll for Halsaway, he goes to the lane and he's fouled. And we talked about Elijah Halsaway going strong to the rim and they did it again. Yeah, he did a good job there, just, you know, he knew he was gonna get contact and just kept going. He got his foot stepped on as he checks on his toe. Yeah, he's good. Hulse away on the season. 71% free throw shooter, the sophomore seven footer from Orlando and Hargrave Military Academy. And he hasn't really panned out to be the center of the future like we thought he was gonna be when he, when he signed last year. But over the last two or three games, he has played better, although he misses the first free throw as DJ Carter Hollinger comes in for Mathieu Cookman and Aku checks back in for Grambling State. And Zion Harmon did a, a LeBron impersonation when Kawhi checked back in the game in the finals and looked over and went, ah, as Aku checked back in. <laughs> Second free throw coming for Hulseway. His long arms flick it towards the rim and in. Wildcats. Five of six from the free throw line. That's where the most of their points have come. They're five of their eight points from the free throw line. Five of their nine points, rather. 14-9, Grambling State leads and has the ball. Dozier out high, hands Munford. He drives, tries to kick it back out, and it's pass is batted away by the long arms of Hulseway. Zion in transition, plays heady, stop start, in the lane, jump, hook, no good. And it was short by Hetty. Grambling State gets the rebound again, a quick, transition opportunity and they didn't hold for a good shot. Nope, immediately tried to put a shot up. Baseline in the post. Jalen Johnson goes up, gets fouled. Doesn't get the bucket, but he'll go to the line. DJ protesting his innocence, saying he was straight up. And he was, but you know, Johnson did a great job of leaning in when he went for that layup to get that call. Kind of, I'm not gonna say fabricate, because obviously there was contact, but he did a good job making it look like, you know, get his hand. Uh, DJ's hand in his face, and refs are usually going to call that. Jalen Johnson misses his first free throw. He's a graduate student forward from Indianapolis, Indiana. Started his college career at UW-Milwaukee. And he came via the coach Dante Jackson pipeline, the head coach here at Grambling, is a native of Milwaukee. He misses both. Still 14-9, five-point advantage for Grambling State. Jackson, his seventh season at the head of this program, that's a travel. As Zion Harmon tried to get the ball across the timeline. And he is bemused, but he took, he took that extra step. He was right in front of us. Yeah. We saw it pretty clearly. And man, the Wildcats all out of sorts in this first half. And They're two of 10 from the floor, and they've turned the ball over five times. And if you notice, Gr uh, Grambling State did the same thing that Southern did where they press up on Zion when he's trying to bring the ball up the court because they know he's not at 100% right now. Wildcats eight minutes without a field goal. And it still feels like they're in the game down just five, 14 to nine. Grambling State controls, dribble handoff for Moten. Weave action, Mikhail Stevenson freshly into the game. He stops at the wing, zips it across to Johnson. Johnson fakes, drives, tries to throw it in the paint, pass batted away, comes right to Aku in the blow block, and then Aku with no time on the shot clock commits a shot clock violation. Great defensive possession for the Wildcats again. Yeah, I mean, that's what's keeping them in the game right now because as you said, zero field goals in the last 8.32. So another defensive game after the Southern one was defensive, but not this defensive. DJ out on top, takes a 18 footer off the rim, no good. Aku boxes out for the rebound and again, no ball movement, just dribble into a shot. And Rambling walks across the stripe, here's Moten. And they've gotten away from that drive action that was working against Southern and that's probably yep. just because of Aku. Into the post, Johnson. He goes baseline against DJ, hook shot, too strong, no good, rebound. Moten saves it, but right to Jacoby, uh, no, right to um, Dyson. Dyson goes all the way. Baseline runner in and oh. out. Halsaway can't get the rebound. The Wildcats snake bitten from the floor right now. Yep, I mean, the pass to save the ball is pretty much straight to Dyson and just couldn't get a, got a good look and then Halsaway uh, couldn't get the board. 
Grambling State gets possession again. A, not a bucket for the Wildcats in nine minutes, but not a bucket for the Tigers in two. Moten, three, short. Pulse away the board, hands Dyson. He goes in transition as the ball poked away from him. It's gonna be Wildcat ball. It was just poked out of bounds by Moten. And the Wildcats are trying to run, but Grambling State's kid doing a good job getting back on defense. Yeah, I mean, when you know exactly what the Wildcats are gonna do, that's the thing about playing a team, you know, going into that conference tournament, especially in basketball. You play a team twice, especially a team that had both, it didn't have Zion and had Zion, so you got to see both versions of this Wildcats team. Correction, it was not just poked out of bounds. They called a reach in on Moten. Cats control. Dyson way out high, flips to Harmon, and he lost the ball. Turned over to Stevenson. He goes coast to coast. Underneath, the ball kicks off of the leg of Hulseway right to a straight on three from Burnett. No good, ball out of bounds. Wildcat ball last touched by Jalen Johnson. This game is all sorts of scrappy and <laughs> not really clean basketball. Not clean basketball, and no teams have really, neither team has really made their shots consistently since the first opening flurry of points. Thune Cookman is two for 12 at the moment, and Grambling State six of 15, and 0 for five from beyond the arc. And I, I think other than that Prairie View game, I, I haven't seen good three-point shooting from the men's side uh, of this tournament. Yeah, but they rely on it so much. Here's a catch and shoot three from the corner, too strong. Hulse away, can't secure the board, out of bounds, rambling ball again. That was the probably the best look that Deshaun Dyson's gonna get. Open three in the corner, just too strong, and the Wildcats do not have their shooting legs under them early on in this one. Yeah. They're doing a great job defensively, though, and but you can't hold a team like this forever. No. Mikhail Stevenson gets past yes, Zion. Sir. He's stripped, but a foul called against Harmon. And Zion Harmon was through on a breakaway, and Coach Theus is, you know, pleading with the ref that that wasn't a foul, but kind of got a little bit of his hand. But at the angle that he reached for that steal, we can't really see where his hand was. Yep, not a lot of fouls in this one, just four each side. Aku against Hulseway at the free throw line, hands to Dozier. Contavious behind the back through the legs, step back three right in the face of Deshaun Dyson, caught all air, and the rebound is grabbed by the Wildcats and DJ Carter Hollinger quickly into the front court, into the corner. It's a three again. It's no good again from Deshaun. It, deja vu almost. Exact same situation happened. Quick, fast break. Tried to save the ball. As Stevenson spins at the free throw line against Harmon. Goes up and under. Got it and the foul. And that was as Damani McIntyre yeah. came in late. And didn't need to hit him. He was yeah. already past him. But yeah, that that's a frustration foul. That was just a tough bucket. He gets by DJ, kind of hits a little spin move, and and a timeout on the floor for the Wildcats. Yeah. Under eight media, we'll take a break and be right back. 16 to nine, Grambling State. Bethune Cookman looking for anything offensively. This is Bethune Cookman University basketball on Cat Network Radio and 1380 WELE.
Back at Bartow Arena for the SWAC Championship semifinals. The Wildcats trail the Grand Lake State Tigers 16 to nine and Mikhail Stevenson is at the line for an and one after he was hit on the back by Damati McIntyre going up and under for a layup. The Wildcats have not made a field goal in almost 10 minutes. They've turned the ball over four times. And yet, you feel that if they get a scoring flurry, they're still right in it. Yeah. And one is good, 17-9. It's still never been more than it's uh, a nine-point game. Yeah, and this is the biggest deficit the Wildcats have faced all tournament. Here's, so. Yeah, here's Zion Harmon. DJ Carter Hollinger now hands back to Z. Fakes the three, goes uh, back to DJ. Floater, good. And finally, the Wildcats off the mark offensively. And you know, that's what happens when we, we get back to what was working against Southern, just drive action, get some good give and goes going, some little screen action, and gets a good look for DJ. McIntyre guarding Jamel Coffer, who's just checked in for Grambling State. Coffer goes left, screen from Aku. Back to the top for Burnett. And around to Stevenson. Now Aku in the low block is gonna be a reach and foul against Reggie Ward. Is, yeah. Aku is just a problem. 6'11", 255, the senior from Kaduna, Nigeria. Yeah, but he kind of, Reggie kind of tried to pull him back because he was probably going to get past him there on that pass. And yep. Deshaun Dyson checks out, Hetty checks back in. Yeah. And the thing about Gramlin is, you know, they're scoring by committee even in their wins against Bethune Cookman. Yeah. You have two different top two scores in both games. Dozier drives off balance one. Oh my goodness. He got that one from all flat on his backside as he fell over. Wildcats quickly into the front court. Hetty reverses course. Harmon jump fakes, goes to the lane, up and under. No, missed it. Even Zion Harmon can't get his wizardry to go. And now it's another foul against Zion Harmon as he tried to rip the ball away from Koffer off the rebound. That's his second foul. And that's and a that seven. Is, yep, so it's gonna be a one and one. Bonus for Grambling, 6.47 to go. And if we're trying to get back into this game, you're going to see them press a lot here. And you might see more fouls late for the Wildcats. And that sends Jamel Coffer to the line. The Marcos Texas native, rather Lansing, Michigan native, but Marcos Texas where he came from, Stephen F. Austin transfer, only averaged uh, shot 27% from the field and 50% from the free throw line coming into tonight. First one was up and good. Coffer doesn't get a lot of playing time, only averages 2.6 points per game. Second one, no good. Rebound to DJ. 20 to 11, largest deficit of the game for the Wildcats, nine points. Six, 6.40 to go first half, Reggie Ward has almost Ooh. has the ball stolen away from McIntyre, but he was Tackled. bulldozed over, almost football style by Burnett. That'll be a foul. I mean, you, <laughs> Coffer kind of tries to uh, wrap around him almost as if it was football. I mean, that's good technique for that, but obviously in basketball, you, you can't really do that at all. <laughs> yeah. Wildcats inbound in front of the scorer's table. Willoughby the trigger gets it into Jacoby Hetty. Jacoby to McIntyre in the round left to Willoughby. He goes down low, Ward to the basket, up and under, hangs on the rim and falls in. Reggie Ward, Reggie Ward has the last two baskets for Bethune Cookman. Wildcats try to trap in the backcourt through McIntyre. Moten, a correction, Dozier gets across the time stripe. 6.15 to go first half, 20 to 13, Grambling with the lead of the ball. Aku way out on top. Goes Stevenson right in front of us in the right hand wing. Now goes left, passes it off to Dozier. Dozier around the Aku screen, drives, lost the ball. Turnover, in transition, here's Hetty. He goes left, then right, gets contacted, puts it up. He'll go to the free throw line as he missed the shot. But the Wildcats finally getting some, a little bit of life off of those turnovers. Yeah, I mean, they've done a good job of getting them. You know, five turnovers for Grambling State, but just haven't been able to get the points off of them. Zero heading into this trip to the free throw line. Hetty at the line. First one rolls in. He was perfect last night from the line, four of four. And he is now three of three, and I pull away, comes back in replacing Reggie Ward. Now, this may be just a planned rotation thing, but 
Reggie Ward scored your last four points from the field. I'm not sure why you're taking him out now. Down by six. And Wait. now down by five as the free throw goes in. 5.55 to go first half. Well, he does have two personal fouls, so maybe they don't want to, you know, put him in foul trouble before you even get to the second half, especially when you have to press as they're doing right now. Weave action up top. It eventually comes to Stevenson. He gets a screen, goes left, paint wide open. He tries to throw it down. It eventually floats it up. No good. Offensive rebound for, rebound for Grambling and then a foul underneath as Coffer grabbed the board and they got reached in on by somebody. It's going to go against McIntyre. That's a head scratcher. I, it looked like to me the ball was still loose. Yeah, the ball was definitely still loose. Just kind of everyone was trying to scramble for it on both teams. So, so it isn't as if, you know, Damani did anything specific as Coach Diaz admonished just the ref on the other side of the court. Feels like he's yelling at us. Yeah. One and one for Coffer. Spins the ball in his right hand. He's a left-hand shooter, pushes it up there. Good on the first one. And it's 21-15 Grambling. If the Wildcats don't get six more points in the next 536, It'll be their lowest scoring half of the season. They scored 21 in the first half against UCF all the way back in December. Second one good from Coffer, 22-15. Willoughby hands to Hetty. He lazily strolls towards the time stripe. Now picks up his dribble and crosses it. Hetty floats it, holds the way out on top, looking for the pass. Looking for the rotation in front of him. It's out of bounds, but DJ was being held, so he couldn't get to the ball. So now that'll be a foul on Grambling. And Coach Diaz, and it th uh, Jose threw it a little bit too much zip. Even if DJ wasn't being held, he would have had trouble holding on to it there. As, and Coach Diaz tells him, why are you throwing the ball so hard? You know, you don't have to zip it right there. I know you're trying to get it to him before the defender can get it, but it doesn't matter if no one can as DJ heads to the line. Front end of a one and one swished down. Wildcats free throw shooting is keeping them in this. Eight of nine from the stripe in the first half. Carter Hollinger, of course, into his motion from the second one. It is good. He is fifth in the SWAC in free throw presented. Zion Harmon first. And now the Wildcats will go to a full court press. Coffer gets it in. Moten. Up the middle of the floor, he'll get it across the time stripe. 5.13 to go first half, 22-17, Grambling leads. Aku, left wing, Coffer, guarded by Willoughby. He'll dribble it to his right, throw it back to the top. Moten goes right, takes a long two, off balance, no good. Rebound to Bethune-Cookman and DJ Carter-Hollinger. Seneca pushes it in transition. Left corner, Hetty pushed out of bounds. Oh, he stepped out of bounds, that's not a foul? That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. He, they, he lands solid and- And then he gets pushed out of bounds. Pushed. No foul, called turnover. McIntyre tried to steal the inbounds pass, but Grambling State gets into the front court. Here's Moten. Johnson, hands weave action, Aku. And now Moten again on the wing in front of us here at the media table. Moten across to Dozier, looks for a drive. McIntyre defends it, 10 on the shot clock. Dozier spins, free throw line, still guarded. Step back, bucket, and one as McIntyre didn't let him land. Man, Contavious Dozier, he's hit two ridiculous shots. One for, one in the paint where he was almost flat on his back and threw it up, and that one fading away through contact. And now it's 24-17, the Wildcats had it within five, and now it's potentially back to a nine-point game. Yeah, but Damani McIntyre now is at, is at three fouls, so now he's gonna sit back down. And when you look at the Wildcat bench, you now have two fouls on Harmon, three on McIntyre is the uh, and one is made, and then two on Ward, and one on Henderson Jr., and then you have fouls on the court as well. Only one, though, for Carter uh, Carter Hondre, who just subbed in. So early foul trouble for the Wildcats is going to force them to use this starting lineup they have in Hulse right now. Away, sorry, Hulse away, handoff. Willoughby, left-hand corner. Working on Aku. Bounces back to Hulse away. Backdoor pass. Dyson had oh it my. swatted away by Dozier on the layup. 
and Dozier's not much taller than me. So uh, the fact that he got up Transition there. Transition three, Moten Dagger. Oh. Timeout, Bethune Cookman. The Wildcats from the free throw line had it to within five, and now a 6-0 run after that has made it a nine point, or an 11 point game, 28-17. This is the last, the absolute last thing that the Wildcats needed. As you know, and Dozier's looking to take over this game, game leading 10 points. He did it in the first game against us in the, in the Grand One State's win, and he's gonna look to do it again. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. And make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University Athletics to the fullest by the latest BCU gear online to the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. Well, the stats, they aren't very good for Bethune-Cookman. Four of 18 from the floor, 0 of four from three. I mean, they're 90%, nine of 10 from the free throw line. That's basically what's even got them a sliver of hope right now. Six turnovers, six points off turnovers for Grambling, two points off five Grambling turnovers for the Wildcats. Rebounding, 16-13 in favor of Grambling. I mean, not a lot to love right now. No, I mean, defensively up until this point, they've been doing a great job. It, they held them to a low, uh, a decent low shooting percentage, and the fouls have just gotten caught up to them as well. Seven of 11 from the line for Grambling State and the bat, the bucket just have not been dropping to Sean Dyson. And we've seen this before in other games in the season when Dyson gets cold, especially when Harmon isn't playing or is limited by this injury. You know, this team often goes cold as well because we work so well off of Dyson and what he brings by being able to get good looks off of them, doubling him or forcing him to try to go left or right and somebody gets open. and just hasn't been there. They haven't been able to get to the drive action because the bigs for Grambling State are so, uh, doing a much better job than Southern's at really just forcing the players outside. They did a good yeah. job of keeping us on the perimeter, but we would drive and they would be weak interior-wise, but yeah. Grambling State does not have that I mean, problem. I've got the only stat that matters. The Wildcats led 4-0 after one minute. They have hit two field goals since then. There's three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. 28-17 Grambling. Seneca will be into the front court, hands Deshaun Dyson. Top of the key, open three, takes it, oh. air ball. Deshaun Dyson does not look like the same player that was hit five threes and scored 20 points yesterday. Moten against Teddy out high, moves to his left. In front of Reggie Theus in the BCU bench. Moten off to, into the corner. Johnson drives, kick to Dozier. He's the hot hand right now, has the ball tapped away from him out of bounds. It'll still be Grambling ball. Seneca Willoughby playing tight defense. Zion Harmon limps back onto the floor, replacing Willoughby. You know Zion is just trying his hardest to eat whatever he can out of that foot. Yeah. Moten inbounding, 10 on the shot clock for Grambling. Baseline throws it all the way up top to Dozier, guarded by Dyson. Dozier goes left, he's double teamed. Back to Moten, four on the shot clock. Pulls up for three straight on, got it. And he'd do everything 31 right. 31 17, and this is turning in to the blowout we dreaded when we woke up this morning. The hypothetical one. And yep. We still got a lot of time left, especially after that Pine Bluff AM game on the women's side. Zion to tried to go through a double team, lost it, got it to Hulse away. Deshaun Dyson, 10 to shoot, goes baseline, runner in the lane, short, offensive board, Hetty puts it in. And that stops a 9-0 Grambling run. Breaks also a two and a half minute scoring drought for Cookman, 31-19, two and a half to go in the first half. Aku, stands top of the key, hulse away with his arms outstretched in front of him. Hands Moten, screen and three, Moten again, got it again. It's a blitz from Grambling State. You thought we could only hold them down for so long. Yeah. And the, the deluge of points have come for the Tigers. Yeah, the offense has to get going. Hetty, somebody has to take control. Pulse away out on top. Pick and roll for Hetty. He oh. air balls a jumper. Rip 
It's a passing, a pass forward. Coffer couldn't put it up underneath. He goes to the corner and retreats. Hands to Moten, still in the right-hand corner. Tries to go baseline against TJ. Oh spins God. underneath the basket to Coffer. Layup, no foul. And that's going to be Halsaway with his first foul. And we'll send Coffer to the line. Tenth team foul on the Wildcats. Only yeah. a minute 40 to go first half. And everyone on this Wildcats team is feeling it somehow, the wear and tear of the season. And Moan did an amazing, he did a spin move on the baseline, basically praying that he doesn't you know, touch the uh, baseline, go out of bounds, and pass it to Coffer, who gets fouled on the way up, makes the first of his uh, two here. And... You know, you need, you really need the offense to start kicking in at this point. There isn't, you know, you don't, if we end with the same 19 points we have with this minute 40 left, we're in trouble. Yeah. Well, we're already in trouble, but maybe we can work out of it a little bit. 36-19. The Wildcats defense held on for as long as they could, but the offense never picked him up, and Grambling's offense finally showed up. DJ, high right wing side, turns it over, trying to get in the post. Grambling all over the Wildcats now. Coffer, coast to coast, he's fouled and will go back to the line. <sighs> and every foul call feels as if they are going against the Wildcats right now. I mean, it's 10, <laughs> now 11 team fouls to just seven yeah. for Grambling State. And a 14 to two run in three minutes for Grambling. Mm -hmm. That's how quickly this has gone. Coffer his second straight trip to the line. He's five of six from there. This is free throws seven and eight. Got the first one. Wow. The Wildcats almost don't have that have more. Bah. He almost has as many free throw attempts as the Wildcats do total. <laughs> Takes his time. Coffer got it. Oh, and man. it is 37 to 19. Kofer goes to the bench. Munford comes back in for Grambling State. 125 to go first half. I think the Wildcats just need to get to the break. Yeah, just let it reset. But hopefully you can get some points before that reset. Hetty like, between the legs, get the screen, goes right, goes all the way to the paint. Floater off the heel, no. Aku. The rebound for Grambling State. The Tigers seem like they've already got one foot of the finals. Their bench is all standing up. Moat and screen and three and hit again. That was in the face of Hulsaway over the seven footer. 41 19. This is incredible. And that you can't even really guard that. He fades on top of the like, NBA range, fades away and makes it. And he's been hot all night. Tyson, hands back to Harmon. Catch and shoot, three wing side, too strong. Rebound, Grambling again. Hulsaway can't get in there. 28 seconds left to go. 41-19, Grambling stayed on top of Bethune-Cookman. Wildcats headed toward their lowest scoring half of the season. They are five of 24 from the field and 0 for six from beyond the arc. Moten. Goes right, guarded by Dyson. Oh, Takes a no three. God. Oh, oh my banked God. it in. Grambling State cannot miss. Their fans are going crazy. Their, fan, their bench is going crazy. 44 to 19 at the half. They end the game, the half on a 25 to two run. No and miss. lowered heads, slumped shoulders for the Wildcats as they shuffle their way to the locker room. And Meanwhile, <laughs> the Tigers are bouncing, high-fiving yeah. fans Yeah, I mean, on their way back. Moten by himself almost has as many points as the Wildcats. He's currently five for six. That's all of his field goals are from beyond the arc, making those tough threes. None of those threes are really easy outside of maybe that one behind Aku when he uh, pinned down on the screen, but it's been a, a uh, it's been a tough, tough first half for the Wildcats. The Wildcats, they look like a team that's out of gas. They yeah. gave everything to win last night, and they just have not had it today. They are down 44 to 19 in a game where they have hit five field goals in the first half. 
0 for 7 from 3, and, and they did not score in the last three minutes. And if it wasn't for getting sent to the line 10, you know, for 10 shots and making nine of them, this would be a 10 to 44 lead for Grambling State. We and will it, go yeah. back to the studio for our halftime break. Larry Steele will tell you about the BCU Day of Giving that's coming up shortly. We'll go back to WELE Studios in Daytona Beach. Here's Larry Steele. What's up, Wildcats? This is Cat Eye Central. I'm Larry Steele. We'll go back to today's game between the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Grambling State Tigers in just minutes. Today, we're joined by the Vice President of Institutional Advancement here at the great Bethune-Cookman University. Dr. Sherry Paramore joins us to talk about our Day of Giving, March 21st, 2024. That's next Thursday. Mark it on your calendar. Dr. Paramore, thank you for joining us on the Can I Radio Network. Hail Wildcats. We can't say it loud enough. Hail Wildcats. Because this Thursday is a big day for Bethune-Cookman University. It's our day of giving. So, VP Paramore, can you tell us what we need to do to get ready for this big day of giving? Yes, and this is a very important time and a very important give back day. Because next Thursday, March 21st, is our annual Wildcat Day of Giving. And this year is extra special because we're celebrating 120 years um, from the day that Dr. Bethune opened bethune Cookman University. I get excited when we talk about giving to bethune Cookman. VP Paramore, can you explain to our listening audience where this money will be going and some of the needs that we have here at the great bethune Cookman University? This year especially, we want people to give wherever your heart's desire to support Bethune Cookman and help keep the doors open. It is so important that we have our alum, our friends of Bethune Cookman to donate on March 30, March 21st, next Thursday. And you just simply go to our website at give.cookman.edu. We want to make it easy for you. Give.cookman.edu. Make a donation to wherever your heart's desire, our, um, our academic programs, the students want to travel, so there'll be opportunities to support them and in, in exposing and giving them that experimental opportunity to learn more about, uh, you know, whatever field they want to go in. Of course, our band, we always need band scholarships. Everybody wants to know, like, our band looks so small. Well, we can't do that without the support of our alumni and friends. Mr. Dr. Wells needs scholarships. The football team, they need scholarships. So we're asking all of our friends, family, alumni, just to invest in our students through our scholarship program. Go to cookman.edu and make sure you support on giving day. Which is March 21st, next Thursday. Am I right about that, Dr. Paramore? Yes, March 21st, okay. next Thursday. Wildcat Nation, remember, no gift is too big, no gift is too small, as long as you give. Thursday, March 21st. Now, Dr. Paramore, I understand that you like competition, and I know you're very competitive yourself, so talk about the competition part of this day of giving. Right, and we're also launching a competitive, you know, we like to be competitive. All right. You know, opportunity for all of our groups to see who, which group can raise the most funds for the organization. Uh, for example, a Divine Nine Challenge will be issued on that day because we're asking all of our Divine Nine alums to come together and make a significant gift, $100,000, that we present at homecoming this year. And so we're going to launch that as well. Wow. That's really good. So are we missing anything, uh, VP Paramore? We need every alum to donate on next Thursday, March 21st, give.cookman.edu. Um, help us celebrate this historic time. We need you to help continue the, continue the legacy of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. As we celebrate 120 years of faith, education, love, hope, and respect. Yes. A big thank you to our Vice President of Institutional Advancement here at the Great Bethune-Cookman University. Dr. Sherry Paramore. It's Women's History Month at Bethune-Cookman University. Now, some of the events that will be going on 
next week. Bethune-Cookman University welcomes you to Love Lessons, Fireside Chat, presented by the Office of Student Affairs in conjunction with the Center for the Study of Women and Girls, Monday, March 18th, 2024, from 5.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. Located in the Michael and Libby Johnson Center for Civic Engagement, 740 West ISB Boulevard in Daytona Beach. Featuring Dr. Crystal A. DeGregory, Ph.D., Director of the Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Center for the Study of Women and Girls. Please join us for this wonderful event. Attention Wildcats and mark your calendars. On March 20th, 2024 at 11.15 a.m., join us for a celebration of Women's History Month at the Mary McLeod Bethune Performing Arts Center. The excitement is building and you won't want to miss this incredible event. Get ready for an inspiring assembly, Women Who Advocate, featuring the distinguished keynote speaker, none other than Cynthia Butler McIntyre, the 24th National President of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Her wisdom and insights promise to make this Women's History Month celebration an unforgettable experience as we honor the achievements and contributions of women throughout history. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the Women's History Month Assembly at BCU. Save the date, March 20th, 2024, and be there at 11.15 a.m. This event is free and open to the public. Be part of the legacy at Bethune-Cookman University. Hail Wildcats. You are cordially invited to attend the Spring 2024 Career Fair, scheduled for March 20th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m in the Mary McLeod Bethune Performing Arts Center. This event promises to be an exceptional opportunity for all majors and features a wide array of employers offering internships and career opportunities. With over 60 companies in attendance, including industry giants like NASA, Disney, and divisions of PGA, this career fair ensures diverse options for your professional growth and development. Whether you're seeking internships, full-time positions, or simply exploring future career paths, this event is designed to cater to your needs. Don't miss out on this chance to network with influential professionals, gain insights into various industries, and potentially secure your dream opportunity. The Spring 2024 Career Fair, March 20th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m in the Mary McLeod Bethune Performing Arts Center. It's that time to go back to the arena and join Mike Torello and Henson White for today's semifinal contest between the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Grambling State Tigers, live from the SWAG Tournament in Birmingham, Alabama, on the Cat Eye Radio Network.
Welcome back to Bartow Arena in Birmingham, Alabama. We are getting set for the second half between the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Grambling State Tigers. It's Grambling State 44, Bethune-Cookman 19, as the Tigers closed on a 22-2 run over the last four minutes to leave the Wildcats in their wake. And a lot of work to do for Bethune-Cookman. Before we get there, it's the Southeast Toyota Dealers Halftime reports. For Bethune Cookman, Hetty leads all of Bethune Cookman scores with eight. Ward and Carter Hollinger have four. Willoughby has two. Halsway has one. That's it. That's all we got. For Grambling State, Moten has 15. Dozier has 10. They've both hit some ridiculous shots down the stretch, including five of six from three for Moten in the first half. Copper. Hoffer had seven, Stevenson and Smith had three, Copper. Aku four, Burnett two. Coffer didn't even shoot a field goal. He was fouled four times and sent to the line for eight shots and made seven of them. Yeah. Team stats, 54% for the field for Grambling State, 20 for Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman didn't hit a three in that first half, 0 for seven. They were 90% from the free throw line. That's they had one saving grace, they were nine of 10. Um, Turned the ball over seven times, leading to eight points off turnovers from Grambling State. The Wildcats forced five turnovers, turnovers from Grambling that only got two points off turnovers. Grambling State out rebounding the Wildcats 20 to 14, and only three to two on the offensive glass. So not a lot of second chance opportunities for anybody. 16 points in the paint for Grambling, eight for Bethune Cookman, seven on the fast break for the Tigers, two for the Wildcats, three blocks for Grambling, one for Bethune Cookman. BCU has four steals, but um, again, the, uh, defensively, outside of the last two minutes, obviously it completely went to pieces, but it was an eight, nine point game. If your offense shows up, that's a, a, a beatable margin. Yeah. Now at 44 to 19, you're letting the last 15 minutes run off the clock and getting on the bus at this point. Yeah, I mean, never say never. Uh, you know, you've seen crazier things happen. 25 point deficit is, it's possible, but you need to play probably the best defense of the entire season. You're gonna have to force turnovers. You're gonna have to make all of your shots. You don't have time to, especially because Grambling State, anytime Bethune Cookman will get some momentum, even if they don't get momentum themselves, they're probably just gonna call, you know, call for a timeout. There's yeah. tons of media timeouts as well, because this is a broadcasted game for ESPN. It's, there's so much is going against the Wildcats here, and yeah, not gonna say insurmountable, but just a very, very tall mountain to climb if they wanna win this basketball game. Wildcats, they gotta look on the bright side, right? Nobody expected them to get this far. They were an underdog in the first round and dominated Southern in that second half. And really, we at the beginning of the year, we did not expect this team to be in this position in the SWAC semifinals against the number one seed. So the, the way they've kind of turned their season around over the last two months has been pretty remarkable considering the last couple of years of Bethune-Cookman basketball H haven't really been that great, right? But since Reggie Theus got here, nine and 21 in 2021-22. It improved to 12 and 20 in 22-23. This year, 17 and 15. They're gonna finish the, re the season with a positive record for the first time under Reggie Theus. That's a massive leap forward. Yeah, I mean, obviously you want to get success, but you know the players don't care about the winning season. Yeah. They, don't, they don't, you know, it's one of those. And Dyson, Hetty, James Henderson Jr., Willoughby will start out this second half. So pretty much the starters for the Wildcats. Yep. Wildcats in the all-black strip, gold letters, gold numbers, the BCU letter mark on the right side of the pants. They will attack the basket to listeners right. Grambling goes right to left. The Tigers will start with the ball here in this second half. They're wearing the all-white strip, black letters and numbers trimmed in gold, a black chevron in gold, a trimmed in gold on the pants with Grambling written vertically in it. Here we go. Burnett controls for Grambling State. Second half underway. Overhead pass to the corner. Here's Burnett. Drives back to the free throw line and gets it back. Quick passing for the Tigers. Leads to Moten in the corner. 
He steps in, takes a long two, short rebound by Reggie Ward. Yeah, maybe Moan can't make anything other than threes. He's only field goals he's made are from there, but he's made five of them. Ward drives all the way in, tough layup no. Offensive board for Henderson. He's fouled as he went up for the putback. And they're probably gonna get Dozier with it. No, they're gonna get Jordan Smith with the foul. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of the Grambling State players that don't get to play a lot in this second half. And for the same for Bethune Cook, but I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a Jason Matthews, right? Maybe a, a, a Mason Dorsey, Dondre Watson, some players like that. Yeah, just get them some minutes on, you know, in a SWAT conference. You want to be back here, obviously, and you want those players to hopefully be there, so you got to get them used to that feeling. Henderson makes two. And it is 44-21. I'm not sure what the delay is here. Oh, uh, Jordan Smith's shirt is untucked. Oh, there's blood on oh, Jordan there's Smith. I, yes, I see it now, it's on his pants. Not sure who is bleeding. <laughs> and we'll see if they get have to make a sum or they'll just try to clean it up right now. They're just gonna try to clean it up right now. We get a little bit of an, an impromptu little timeout here. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network if you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network. You can reach out to the Wildcats Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. And the Diamond Cats are back at Jackie Robinson Ballpark and looking to continue their hot start to the 2024 season. You can catch Bethune-Cookman baseball next weekend as the Wildcats host Florida a m for their first home conference series. Friday at 7, Saturday at 6, Sunday at 1. All the action live on the Cat Eye Network as well. Grambling State controls up 44-21. Just 30 seconds into the second half. And this game is probably about to be played at a snail's pace. For Michael Moten, double teamed out high, high post Burnett, throws it underneath Aku against Ward, goes up, gets fouled. And there's yep. not much you can do when Jonathan Aku has a head of steam going down the lane. Yeah, you had a head of steam and got up, and pretty much all Reggie Ward and James Henderson Jr. could do is at least just try to affect this shot. They end up fouling him. Now Aku is a 40% free throw shooter. Misses the first one long. Not which gonna is the, help the that downside which. to a lot of those taller players is they're not great from the free throw line. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal notwithstanding. Aku's second is good, 45-21. And maybe a goal for the Wildcats is just win the second half. Outscore yeah. your opponents in the second half. Prove that you were competitive. Reggie Ward dribbles around the free throw line, hands back to Hetty. Now Willoughby top of the key, Henderson on top again. Out to Willoughby, left wing, drives to the baseline, shovels it to Hetty, underneath, blocked by Aku under the basket, to Henderson, hook shot, he's got rejected by Aku, it comes all the way to center court where Morton picks it up. That was a massive rejection. Transition, catch and shoot, wing three, too strong for Dozier. Dyson grabs the rebound, he pushes it in transition, Hetty stops at the wing, and we'll dribble it back out. Now he drives again, spinning in the lane, puts up a off-balance floater and got it. Yep, and that's a, you know, a lifeline there. A tough basket made by Hetty, and hopefully you can get the team going. Hetty up to 10, three of eight from the floor, four of four from the line. He's the only Wildcat with more than four points. As somehow Deshaun Dyson is 0 for nine from the floor. It's incredible. Moten drives, off balance layup short, rebound Willoughby. Wildcats in transition again. Willoughby sprinting down the floor, stops, gives to Dyson, wing three on the right side, too strong. Henderson the rebound. He almost had it ripped away from him, he plays it back out to Willoughby. Catch and shoot three, off the mark to the left. Wildcats again, 0 for 10 now from three. Couldn't get the, you know, can't get the shot to fall down. And not really even the best looks on that possession. They just are trying to get a three. Dozier swings his hands in the air above his head, calling a play. He walks to the right-hand wing, back to the top for Burnett. Swung to the left corner, and Smith got it back. Takes a three, hits a three. Nothing 
is going down for the Wildcats and everything is going down for Grambling. Jordan Smith, only a 24% three-point shooter. That's only his 10th make of the season and it looked easy for him. Yeah. 48-23, Grambling on top. Henderson, right-hand side, Day-Day. Double step back, three blocked. Wildcats get it back though with Hetty. Hetty on the baseline against Smith, goes left, hook shot, back iron no good, Ward, offensive board, can he put it back up? No, we got it stripped by Burnett, Grambling State controls. Splitting a double team in, op in the open floor, Moten, kick to the corner, Dozier drives, baseline, step back jumper, short, rebound, Henderson. Yeah. Willoughby pushes it in transition and has the ball picked off by Burnett, he was trying to get it underneath to Ward Jr. And ninth, an eighth turnover for the Wildcats in the game. And Grambling taking at least 10 seconds off the shot clock every time down the floor now. Mo Moten goes left, screen from Aku. Switch comes, double team. Dozier, top of the key, drives, flies to the lane, got his shot blocked by Day Day. Ward, Maybe. all the way, coast to coast, layup oh blocked, my. but it's gonna be goaltending. Reggie Ward finally gets something to go his way as Jordan Smith attacked the glass, but it was already off the glass. 48-25, first media timeout of the second half. Grambling State over Bethune-Cookman here at the SWAC semifinals in Birmingham. This is BCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network Radio and 1380 WELE. Back at Bartow Arena. SWAC semifinals between the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Grambling State Tigers. Grambling State up 48-25, 15-58 to go second half. Grambling State controls, they get it in. Full court press from the Wildcats. They still trap along the baseline. Long pass ahead, Burnett in the open floor. Skips it across, and, it and then it's stripped away from Smith. Wildcats back on the ball, nice steal by Hetty. Hetty goes all the way to the rim. He floats it up over the outstretched arms of Johnson, but missed the layup tough basket, great job on the defensive end and just couldn't get the basket to go. Goes for a runner and gets close and now Grambling State once again just trying to take all the time off the clock. Seneca is trying to press him high. Burnett goes right. Nice off ball defense by Hetty to prevent Moten from getting the ball to go down low. Great defense by Henderson. Two to shoot, Moten strip, lost the ball. Day Day floats it ahead. Tapped to Ward, and then under the basket, 
Hetty missed it. Ward missed the tip in. Unbelievable. Just Two on O, oh, and they missed it twice. Tried to get that shot to go for Hetty, and he was in, you know, off the fast break, and was probably going to go for a dunk, and got his shot altered, so he just went up for a layup, and Reggie Ward went up to help him, and just couldn't get the basket to go down. It's just been a lid on this Bethune Cookman basket on both sides of the court. Floating all the way in, reaching again. foul against Willoughby. But, but yeah, that's that's a microcosm of the entire game for Bethune Cookman. They they've actually outshot Grambling 36-32, but they've only hit seven field goals. And they call that a shooting foul. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah, on that one. That's but not a shooting foul. But hey, I guess the refs just want the points to go up. Yeah, at Mo this point. Moten goes to the line for two, and he misses the first one. Front iron, back iron, no. It was lots of rain here this morning, so the Wildcat baseball team Delayed. that was supposed yeah. to start their series against Mississippi Valley State down in Jackson yes, uh, today had their game postponed until tomorrow. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow, then one on Sunday as they try to start SWAC play with a series win. Yep. Moten back to the line for his second of a two-shot penalty. Floated up, and it's good. 49-25, 24 points the gap, 14-37 to go. Seneca Willoughby walks across the time strike. Willoughby goes left against Moten, flips it back to DJ. He has a head of steam into the lane. Floater good. Carter Hollinger has hit a couple of those in this yeah. game. And he was really hot last game. We just haven't been able to get to him as much. Carter Hollinger up to six. Ward six, Hetty ten. Those are the leading scorers for Bethune-Cookman. Johnson hands Dozier top of the key, guarded by Willoughby. Dozier spins, goes left, up to the lane. Tough shot, don't go. Off the side of the rebound, grabbed by Grambling State. A put back by Jalen Johnson is a foul as he went for the hook shot outside the restricted area. And that makes it 15 total team fouls for Bethune-Cookman. And just fourth on Ward. Yep. And Coach Sias is an, oh, never mind. Mike Entire is getting up who is three. So they're probably just going to. First win. foul, a first shot missed by Johnson. He's a 62% free throw shooter, the Indianapolis native. I mentioned the first half he played at UW-Milwaukee. He did. But before that, for three years, he played at Alabama a and So he knows the swag. A two-time box to row All-American and was an all-swag first team performer two years ago. Then spent one season at UW-Milwaukee. Missed both, though. 27-49. Wildcats down here in the second half. 13.53 to go. Carter Hollinger at the free throw line. Stops, pops, fouled, and they go crashing to the ground, the pair of them. Can't really tell who the grambling defender was. Oh, it was Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Almost looked like a wrestling maneuver from Johnson yeah. there. And so DJ is going to go to the line to shoot two. Johnson falls on top of DJ, and DJ does a great job to roll, basically roll through. If we're talking wrestling, he did a great job to roll through there and land on top. So DJ to the line. Carter Hollinger, two of two from the stripe his first time. And he receives the ball, bounces it once, twice, three times into his motion, and he got it. Wildcats still shooting pretty well from the free throw line, 12 of 13. And Aku comes back in after starting the second half on the bench. Yeah, but for Grambling State, that makes sense. You know, you don't want to use one of your best yeah. players. And I, I think for Grambling State, there's going to be a lot of rotation in the second half, right? You're up big. You've got a, a potential final to play tomorrow if they see this out. You don't want to use up all your good legs like the Wildcats did yesterday. Yeah, Here's Grambling State into the front court, through the full court press. At the same time, you don't want to give this game away and then try to have, end up it being close, and then you have to bring people back in and all types of stuff. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Wildcats, whatever the case, need to get, you know, just going a little bit more offensively. Defensively, they've done a good job pretty much all game. It's just baskets haven't yeah. been dropping for them. Aku out high, hands to Coffey. He puts up a thrower, no good. And an offensive foul going to be called underneath the basket on Aku. Aku crashed to the bound ground, but he gets the 
foul called against him. Now well, something had to go the Wildcats way in this yeah. game and it'll be VCU ball. And DJ's favoring his right leg, his right knee specifically now. Walking ginger, and we see him work on it a little bit throughout you know, the time down here in Birmingham. And that fall certainly didn't help when you have a 6'11", 250 guy landing on you. Wildcats going left to right. Dyson goes to the low block. Off the glass, no. And the rebound, not there. But he gets it back off of a deflection. Into the corner. McIntyre, catch and shoot three. Bang! Finally a three in the game. Damani McIntyre hits his first one of the tournament. Yeah, but now the press is coming in. And Seneca almost gets a steal at a timeout, Grambling State. It's a 7-0 run for Bethune-Cookman. They've outscored Grambling 13 to 49. But what did I say? I said win the second half, yeah. right? Don't even look at the score. At this point, it's one of those where it's like, don't look at the scoreboard until it gets close again. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're we'll just going to play your game until, uh, you know, either the game ends or you're back into a close game and then you got to start using your timeouts and all that stuff. But. They've done a good job in the second half, as they have all game, with just trying to get those, you know, yep. shots to go down. We'll take a quick break and be right back. This is Bethune Cookman basketball on Cattle Network Radio and 1380 WELE. Forty-nine thirty-two, Grambling on top here in the SWAC semifinals. The Tigers have the ball, but it's a 7-0 run over the last minute and a half for Bethune Cookman for Michael Moten. Hands to Jordan Smith, and then on to Burnett, still top of the key. Heels on the SWAC logo at midcourt here at Bartow Arena on the campus of UAB. Moten looking for the post, won't find it. Picks up his dribble. Now to the corner for Smith. Smith goes baseline, puts up a shot, blocked by DJ Carter Hollinger, shot clock violation. Did a great job on that possession, forcing him to basically into every BCU defender on the team. Great job by Carter Hollinger, staying straight up. Yeah. Not committing that foul, getting the block. Wildcats back on offense. Ball in the hands of Deshaun Dyson. Still doesn't have a point tonight, Deshaun. He's 0 of 12. DJ outside on the left wing. He drives against Aku. Gets some space, misses a runner short. And Aku, you know, being as big as he is, kind of, DJ ran into him and kind of met a wall and just had to back up and but try again, to take his post, so couldn't make it there. But again, that was a possession with only one action and no passes. That's what the Wildcats got to try and get away from. Scramble on the floor. Dyson couldn't get the turnover as he ripped it away from Smith. Dozier recovers, goes all the way in, layup no good. And again, good defense from DJ to stay straight up. Deshaun flips into the front court, in the corner. Hetty oh, gets come on. a, he threw up a three. The foul's gonna go on the floor as Aku raced out to try yeah. and contest. He tried to up fake him and go to his left and the leg of Aku caught him. Yeah, Aku basically, another wrestling move, a flying knee to the chest <laughs> for uh, Jacoby Hetty's troubles. Is, We've got another media timeout on the floor. Wildcats on a 7-0 run and with the ball, down 49-32 in the semifinals here when we come back. The Phil Cookman University basketball on the Cat Eye Network.
Back at Bartow Arena in Birmingham, 11.45 to go in this Southwestern Athletic Conference semifinal. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats trail the Grambling State Tigers 49 to 32, but on a 7-0 run over the last 241, have played some solid defense, got some turnovers, and they're on the ball now attacking the basket. Two listeners right, Hetty to trigger the inbound, goes to McIntyre at the top of the key. Zion Harmon back in the game off the timeout. He is one-on-one -on -one out high, and he'll hand it off to Hetty at the top. Hetty goes left, then right, spins the lane, up fake, puts oh. up a shot, rejected from behind by Jordan Smith. Offensive board for Bethune Cookman into the corner, McIntyre, six to shoot, gotta get one up. He does, it's off the side of the backboard, no good. And the board comes down to Grambling. Moten against Hetty, goes left, gets by Hetty. DJ picks him up at the free throw line, hands it back to Burnett as Grambling continues to try and waste time and use as much clock as possible. 11 minutes to go in the game, 10 on the shot clock. Here goes Jordan Smith, rifled around the ring, back to Smith at the free throw line, into the corner for Burnett. Catch and shoot three, That's short. Off. Dyson walks across with it. Dyson gets a screen from DJ, doesn't take the three contested on the left wing. Carter Hollinger, double teamed out, high hands back to Hetty with a little two-man game. Dyson, oh, he got it blocked again as he tried to go through the lane. Devonnie oh. McIntyre almost Are gets a steal, serious? but the ball careens straight to Michael Moten, and he, I, that's just luck. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's actually a really great play for Grambling, for Stevenson, who saw the ball was tipped and jumped up midair, stopping McIntyre from being able to get it and taps it towards both of his teammates on that two-on-one they had after that block. Hetty out high, trapped against the side of the court, almost turned it over. DJ into the corner, Zion, up fake, five to shoot. Zion baseline, floats it up, no good. Hetty there for there the tip-in though. That's the first tip-in I think we've gotten all game. 51-34 with 9.50 to go. Wildcats show some press. Skipped into the front court. Smith unopposed to foul. the lane, and a foul underneath, yeah. and it's gonna go on Aku. He, on lit he literally pulls DJ along with him. Yeah, DJ was trying I was, to for a second there, I thought they were gonna try and get DJ with that, but he was pulled down from behind by Aku. Yeah, I, it was actually the inverse. Aku was in front. And then Aku was backing up and just stopping DJ from trying to get around to close down on the driving uh, Stevenson. And gets the foul call. And all of a sudden, you know, That's the Wildcats start, getting, start hitting some threes maybe. Well, they've only hit one in the game. And Deshaun Dyson is on the bench. Zion Harmon stares at Tremichael Moten. And he lost the ball. Just completely lost it to Moten in transition. Great oh, block. Oh, and a foul. Oh, man. We thought that there was a block, but Stevenson went to the basket and got fouled. That, that's something we've seen Zion do in this tournament. We haven't seen him do all year. He just mishandled it completely. No pressure, just dribbling at the top of the key and just completely lost it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious to anybody watching that, it, that, that ankle injury is affecting his play. And because, I mean, as you said, we literally, even when he came back from the hand injury early in the season, we didn't see that, you know, issue at all. So First one good from Stevenson, the sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Comes to Grambling State from Milwaukee Tech, where he led the NCJAA in assists and won the Division II national title at the NCJAA level with Milwaukee Tech. His second free throw, after a long wait, is no good. 52-34, Grambling State leads, 9.18 to go. Zion controls, Hetty after slipping a screen on the right wing. He goes left against Smith. Jump stop at the free throw line, too strong on a jumper. Hetty, after getting 10 points in the first half, only has two so far in the second, and a lot of them are on off balance shots like that, contested jumpers from not really that close. Stevenson hands to Moten. Calls a play. Goes left. Screen from Aku. Moten throws it back to the corner. 
Jordan fakes the three, drives baseline, stopped by Hetty, seven to shoot. Here's Aku back to the basket. Hands back to Jordan Smith. He drives with three, with two, with one. Turnaround jumper, That's no. All. Good defensive possession by Bethune Cookman. Seneca Willoughby controls through traffic. Stopped by Smith at the high left wing side. Tries to dump it in the paint. The pass is deflected and picked off. There's too many here down late. Just a couple too many crucial turnovers on these possessions where they do great jobs defensively and just can't get a good look or. Moten rifles it underneath. Burnett Great has block, a shot Seneca. blocked by Seneca Willoughby. It'll be a baseline in for the Grambling State Tigers. Reggie Ward is going to come back into the game. Munford and Jalen Johnson check back in for Grambling. Remember, Ward has four fouls. McIntyre also has four fouls. Nobody on Grambling has more than three. Smith and Aku have that many. Grambling inbound into the basket that they attack. Two listeners left. 13 on the shot clock, 8.07 on the game clock. In the corner, hits Moten. And he'll walk back to the top with it, guarded by Hetty. Moten left, then right, then left again. Gets a screen, pull up jumper short. Rebound Zion Harmon. Harmon in front of us here at the media table. Between oh. his legs dribble. Lost the ball, but it comes straight to Seneca. Out to DJ. He drives left-handed into the lane. Goes all the way off the glass and in. Nice move by Carter Hollinger. He's up to 10 points now. Really tough bucket from DJ. BCU calls a timeout. We'll see if it goes to a media or not. We're waiting. We are waiting. And it is immediate timeout. We'll take a quick break and be right back. 52-36, scrambling on top of Bethune-Cookman here on the Cat Eye Network Radio and 1380 WELA. Back at Barto Arena, the Grambling State pep band away to our left. Playing to the delight of the Grambling State fans that have made the trip up from Louisiana here to Birmingham. Their Tigers lead 52-36, 7.38 to go in the contest. It'll be Grambling State ball. Wildcats will look for some full court pressure. Deshaun Dyson back in the game after being on the bench the last couple of minutes. Grambling State has been held scoreless over the last 255. Wildcats have played some good defense in this second half. And they lead in this second half specifically 17 to eight. But it's still 52-36 because of the 44-19 gulf at the end of the first half. Stevenson back to Moten. 
and then around the horn it goes, into the corner from Munford, and they go around the cor horn again to the right-hand side, in the paint, turned over, McIntyre with the steal. And now we'll go back up the court, Reggie Ward, a great steal from McIntyre. Ward trying to back down a defender in the paint. Now he's doubled, goes back out to Willoughby, reset DJ. Dyson, in front of his own bench, gets a screen, goes left, into the paint, floater in the lane, short, gets his own miss, kick out Ward. Ward goes driving back inside, he puts it up no good, and the rebound is ripped away by Munford. Man, the Wildcats just can't get, it, it is mostly layups that they just can't get. Yeah, just can't buy a bucket around the rim. It's been, you know, tough sledding down there, even when they get a good look. Moten out on top after the kick out from Stevenson. Again, he'll let just let the clock drain, tend to shoot. Now eight, drives left. Dyson on him, scoops it up, no good, uh, and it's what? tipped in. It's an own goal by Reggie Ward. He tried to block the shot, but ended up just tipping it in to his own net. It's, a, yeah. it's the second time we've seen that this season. Yeah. The other one was much more egregious. Yeah. 54-36, Willoughby drives off the glass. Oh my goodness. It was all the way down and just popped back out. Just, you know, you just can't buy a basket. You can't even get mad because that's exactly what you want him to do. He does everything right. It just doesn't go down for him. 54-36, Grambling trying to book their ticket at a second straight SWAT tournament final. Driving, getting fouled, and scoring is Jordan Smith. And I think that's going to go on McIntyre. That'd and be that'll be his fifth foul. Yeah. Nope, they're going to get it on Reggie Ward. That's his fifth foul, so it doesn't matter. No, and that is Reggie Ward Jr.'s fifth foul. The and junior will exit for likely his final appearance of the season. And Zion Harmon comes in to replace Willoughby. And who's going to come in to replace it's Reggie? It's going to be Jacoby Hattie. Hattie, but Reggie Ward on the season. Uh, a great season. Led yeah. the team in rebounds, led the team in three point percentage. Led the team in field goal percentage overall. Scored 9.8 points per game. He was massive down the stretch. He was big yesterday. Yeah. yeah. A lot of our close games, Reggie Ward has been a you know a catalyst because just of his style of play. Loves to drive. Loves to get tough layups. He just haven't been dropping this game. But he's had an amazing season. And hopefully he'll be back for his senior year as a Wildcat. And do they have another uh, great season and possibly build on this one. Hetty driving into the paint. Jump stop. Turn around floater. Yes. Finally, Jacoby Hetty off the mark. That's his second and third points, or third and fourth, rather, points of the half. 57-38, BCU down. Stevenson with a full head of steam. Underneath, Aku, a wrestling match for the ball, ripped away by McIntyre. Oh. Up ahead, Dyson in a crowd, has oh. his shot rejected off the backboard, but it's a goal 10. The, it was over, it wasn't off the backboard, it was over the area of the cup in yeah. the air, so that's a goal 10. And well, that's, some, that's one way for Deshaun Dyson to get his first points of the contest. I mean, he wow. did everything right, just couldn't, you know. Wildcats full court press in the corner, and somehow Coffer got out of it and across to Moten into the front court. 17 point lead, 57 40, five minutes to go. Floater from Munford, back iron no good. DJ looking to push it in transition. Zion Harmon flying up the floor. He goes right, skips it, back out. DJ. For three. Good! <laughs> the second three of the game for DJ Collar Hollinger. Wildcats press again. Stevenson up the far sideline. He's going to get into the front court. Overhand pass underneath. They throw it up for oh. Aku. He's hey, going to get block. it blocked. No, a foul. Are you serious? And that's going to be the fifth on McIntyre. We thought he blocked the dunk from Aku. He did, but... Apparently, made contact. We're probably going to get a, a replay here on the board, but. That's five on McIntyre. Aku going to go to the line, and the number one. He's pointing to the big board. Oh, that was clean. He, that's all that ball. That was clean. That was all ball, man. He's, he's asking the ref to look at the scoreboard, but the all-time steals leader in Bethune-Cookman University history Exits the floor with five fouls, and no, and apparently no reviews here in the SWAC tournament. Well, you can't, you can't overturn. It's like calling balls and strikes. You can't overturn a foul that's already been called. Uh, and Halsaway is going to come in to replace him, and it has been a 
privilege to broadcast Damani McIntyre's games over the past two years after he transferred in from Southern Utah. First from Aku, no good, and he is a, a locker room presence and a defensive presence that the Wildcats were sorely missed going forward. Again, yeah. the all-time steals leader in Bethune-Cookman history has fouled out with four and a half to go in the game. Aku misses both, 57-43, Bethune-Cookman on the ball down in this contest with 4.26 to go. Hetty. Horns in front of him, hands off DJ. And now Dyson top of the key. Pulse away, tried to go pick and roll to uh, Hetty, there was nobody there. Now Harmon, step back three from the wing, got it! Zion Harmon finally gets points in the game. 57-46, 3.55 to go. Wildcats try and trap in the backcourt. Morton gets across, guarded by Hetty. Moten trapped against the court, the mid-court strike. Bounce pass Aku. Looking for Dozier, who's just checked back in. He's sat most of the second half, Contavious Dozier. Moten, Ooh. pinned down, doesn't take the three. Tries to drive left, Tulsa away in the way. Ooh. Eight to shoot, up and under through a double team. Now Dozier again, on the left side. Moten, oh, deep my. three, straight on, got it. That might be a backbreaker for Bethune-Cookman. Yeah. That breaks a 10-2 run for the Wildcats. Yeah. I think it was a missed switch. I mean, they just kept passing it back and forth between Moten and also he was stuck with like three guys he had to guard and ends up giving up the three to Morton, Morton who's been hot all game. Harmon out on top, screen from Hulseway. He goes left against Dozier. He pulls up for three, no good. Hulseway can't box out for the board. Aku grabs it. And <laughs> Hulseway getting an earful from Coach Theus. He's gonna be replaced by James Henderson. Coach Theus, not a, not a happy camper today. Rolling to the basket, oh. between the leg dribble. Oh, he oh, missed, missed a one hand slam is missed by Stevenson. He just Trying to do it. too much. Zion, oh. oh, he tried to go for the alley-oop, and he threw it out of bounds almost, or just threw it away. Wildcats trying to be fancy, and this game has gotten a little bit sloppy here towards the end of it. Aku up on top, almost threw it away. The long arms of Burnett corral it, and the head coach for Grambling State, Dante Jackson, just tells him to hold the ball, 2.21 to go. A 14-point lead, Moten all the way in, and a foul called, and he'll go to the line. You maybe thought that the Wildcats had a chance Dude, before that 11. three. They were down 11, yeah. and then the three from straight on by Moten. It was NBA range, just nobody switched on to him. We will go to our final media timeout of the game. Wildcats down 60-46 with 2.17 to go in this season here in the SWAC semifinals as Bethune-Cookley University basketball on the Cata Network and 1380 WELE.
Tremichael Moten is at the line for Grambling State. They lead it 60 to 46. The Wildcats were down by as many as 25. They got it back to 11, but a Tremichael Moten three-pointer maybe has dashed any hopes the Wildcats have had from a searing comeback. They've still outscored Grambling State by 10 in the second half. Moten's second is no good. And it's 61-46, 2.16 to go. We had a little bit of hope there for a minute. Wildcats are gonna have to start hitting threes and start hitting them now. Here's Deshaun Dyson. Dribbling between his legs. Low post for DJ Carter Hollinger backing down a defender. Hand off Henderson and he lays it in up and under. Tough bucket now, you literally have to press this entire remaining 152. You have to try to get a turnover here in the backcourt. 61-48, Moten. Trying to go by Harmon, he does step up into the front court, and another 20 seconds will likely run off the clock, and that's how much is left on the shot clock here. And Sion's trying to, it's hardest to try to get to the ball, but Moten gets the screen, foul. goes right. Henderson almost got oh. the steal. Moten step back, got it, that's a long two. Moten taking over. He's up to 24 on eight of 14 shooting. Yeah. Dyson, baseline, long two too strong rebounded by Grambling State thrown away it's loose up top Zion has it I just wanted him to pull that three and what okay so the shot clock didn't re didn't reset and Grambling State is gonna say Stevenson back in I mean I mean there's your turnover right there but Trim Michael Moten, man, 26 points, nine of 15 shooting, six of seven from three. I mean, really outside of him, there's not been much offensively for Grambling State, and the Wildcats are gonna go to the line, is off the inbounds pass. DJ Carter Hollinger took a baseline jumper and got fouled by Jordan Smith. That's his fourth foul. And right at the second half, Hanson, when we were down 44 to 19, I said, we, we've got to win the second half. Yeah. And we've done that. It's 29-19, yeah. and call that Grambling State playing for time or not playing their best lineup at all times. I don't think it matters. No. The Wildcats closed this game on with some momentum, and, and we can be proud of that as supporters of this team. DJ gets the first one to go. Carter Hollinger is actually now tied for the team lead in scoring with 14 points with Jacoby Heddy. And if Moan, you know, it's one of those games, you look at that first half, if you know, a couple of, you know, Dyson shots go down, and then if Moten doesn't hit some of those, you know, tougher shots, or Dozier doesn't hit some of those tougher shots, it's a much closer game heading into this last minute. Carter Hollinger but gets two. Sorry, he's now taking the scoring lead at 15 for the Wildcats. Good game for DJ in his final collegiate yeah. game. He is a senior, along with Deshaun Dyson and Imani McIntyre. Into the front court, controlled by Dozier. Flip back up to Burnett. And once again, Grambling State will just let the time run down the clock. 13 points the gap, 45 seconds left, Wildcats will foul. And Mason Dorsey, the freshman, is gonna get set to check back in. Mason Dorsey, the freshman, comes in. Deshaun Dyson is gonna walk off of a college basketball court for the final time, gets a huge embrace from his head coach. And here comes DJ as well. Once again, a handshake, a big hug from everybody on the sideline, and I'm tearing up a little bit. These two have given so much to the program over the last yeah. couple of years, and it's unfortunate that it has to end like that. Missing the front end of a one and one was Grambling State, so the Wildcats will control it. 35 seconds left. Oh. And oh. down on the floor goes Zion Harmon off the ball. Was there any contact? No, he just, it was just his ankle, He just went man. down. And he is being attended to by the athletic trainer. Wildcats will have to put somebody in for the last 33 seconds. And you can tell that, that Zion, I mean, he's played, let's see how many minutes tonight, 17 minutes. He only played eight, and he can barely put any pressure on that left foot. And he's going to be carried to the bench by DJ Carter Hollinger. Zion Harmon, only a sophomore, his future uncertain we hope he's back in a Bethune-Cookman yeah. uniform next year he rehabs this injury 
unfortunately not at 100% for these playoffs and the Wildcats have felt his absence today. He hit that one big three. He hit that one three yesterday against Southern, but they missed, they, they missed his 15 points per game. And into the game now comes Simeon Womack, the sophomore from Jacksonville, nicknamed Simeon Matic, one of the best nicknames of the basketball I've ever heard. But for the last 33 seconds, Dorsey inbounds to Hetty, and with a 10 second different shot clock to game clock, Womack will control out high. He won't even take a dribble. He'll just let the time run down. Yeah. Now the play comes. They go to the left. Hetty, deep three. Ooh, he yeah, got it. Got it. <laughs> Jacoby Hetty, the sophomore from Chicago, sends the Wildcats out with a bang. 10 That's point game, 63 They're still 53. pressing with 15 seconds left. And Dozier into the front court. Let's see if they foul. They will foul with 12 seconds left. And they're going to send Dozier to the free throw line. What a second half for Mathieu Cook when all, when all is said and done, right? Like, we're down about it because the season's about to be yeah. over and, and all that, but... But 34-19. 34-19. If the game, if we played that first half just a little bit closer, I mean, that's, you know, a great comeback. And you'd be in, you know, this game would be possibly going to free throws for a different reason. Yeah. And, you know, the, you really can kind of make the game hinge on that 22-2 run at the end of the first half. The Wildcats just didn't have an answer for Grambling State. And the first shot for Dozier is good. It's a one and one, so he'll go to the line for a second one, 64-53. 12 seconds left. Wildcats have two timeouts. Don't think they'll use one. No. Only got 12.9 seconds left. It's double digits. Even if you had T-Mac on your team, you'd. And that's it. Second one is good, 65-53. The Wildcats have been held to under their scoring average, well under their scoring average, 73 points per game they average. They've only scored 53. Womack will dribble it out. He won't even attempt a shot. That's the final here from Bartow Arena in Birmingham. The final score, Grambling State 65 from Soon Cookman 53. The Grambling State Tigers will move on to the finals where they lost last year against Texas Southern. They could play Texas Southern. Yeah. Coming up later tonight, the second semifinal, Alabama A&M and Texas Southern. Texas Southern looking for a four-peat yeah. in I mean, this tournament. Very tough team, Texas Southern. They just turn it on here at the SWAC tournament, and they're going to look to try to win another one. Yeah. Uh, and they have their, of course, their other semifinal game. The Wildcats season comes to an end. Your final score here at Bartow Arena Grambling State 65, Bethune-Cookman 63. Let's run you through those scoring totals one last time. Jacoby Hetty, brilliant in his final game of the season. Played 34 minutes, had 17 points, six of 17, one of two from three, four of four from the line, nine rebounds, almost a double-double for him. Yeah. But uh, outside of him, there wasn't a lot going right for the Wildcats offensively today. DJ Carter Hollinger was the other bright spot. Four of six from the floor, perfect from the free throw line, yeah. five rebounds. I mean, and for someone who is playing their final collegiate game is like DJ is, that's the way you'd want to go out. Yeah, head held high, you know. They played really well in that second half. And very, very tough performance for the Wildcats. And that's, you know, you just don't want your season to end like that. Yep. No one wants their season to end here. Yep. And, Birmingham or at any conference yeah. tournament, any tournament, you know, you want to play until you win it all, but not this year, but maybe next year, you know, yeah. most of these guys will hopefully be back. You only have three guys graduating out and Dyson and uh, uh, Carter Hollinger, Carter Hollinger and, and McIntyre. McIntyre. Yeah. So though you will miss McIntyre steals and Dyson, you know, Dyson's volume shooting and DJ's pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, DJ's a utility guy. At heart, does you know when we needed good defense, he was there. When we needed points, he was there. Tough, th you know, tough shots all season, clutch shots all season. Locker room yeah. presence, you know, we're gonna miss him a lot. So I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so the rest of Bethune Cookman stats, other than the 15 from Carter Hollinger and the 17 from Eddie Ward, had six. Henderson had four. Harmon and McIntyre each had one three-pointer apiece. Willoughby and Dyson each had two. Pulseway had one, and that's it. For Grambling State, man, oh man, for Michael Moten. 26 points, 9 of 15 from the floor, 6 of 7 from three. 
he almost single-handedly won them this game because Dozier had 12, and other than that, Coffer had seven all from the free throw line. In the first half. Aku five, Burnett two, Stevenson four, and that's it. So really, you got beat by 26 points from Tremichael Moten. Yep, and pretty much all from beyond the arc until late, and uh, including basically that long two and a layup, everything else yep. just dropping. But from beyond the arc. The team statistics do not paint a great picture. The Wildcats shoot 29% from the floor to 42% from Grambling State, 27% from 3, 4, 15, 7 of 15 for Grambling. They were 94%, 15 of 16 on free throws, the, probably the best free throw shooting performance yep. all season from the team to keep them in it. They turned the ball over 11 times, 11 points for Grambling off those turnovers. They forced 12 turnovers, only six points for the Wildcats off of those turnovers. They out rebounded Grambling 38 36 and 10 to 6 on the offensive glass and got nine second chance points to Grambling State's four. The bench was big for Bethune Cookman, 22 points off the bench, and that's because DJ Carter Hollinger didn't start. Yep. And he got 15 of those 22. Points in the paint 24 for Bethune Cookman, 22 for Grambling State. 10 off the fast break for the Tigers, six for the Wildcats. Just not the. They were shut down in the kind of style they wanted to run which yeah. is that fast paced in transition offense couldn't couldn't get it going and you know Grambling took advantage of that a lot of the players you could tell physically the wear and tear of the season and that quick turnaround is just there you know they couldn't start well and then they played better in that second half and I think really if you give them that you know longer turnaround you give them not even at least a full 24 they you know might get some it, more time to refresh and probably would have played that first half a little bit better but um yeah i mean just out of the gate it was tough you score 19 points in the first half you give up 44 that's always going to be a tough hole to get out from but they outscored grambling state by 13 in the second half yeah. and, and really if they had that kind of performance in the first half you're talking about a whole different ball game but yeah. you can't talk ifs or buts the game is over and then that's the end of the season for bethune cookland basketball once again we say a thank you a hearty thank you to our three seniors, um, DJ Carter Hollinger, Damani McIntyre, and Deshaun Dyson. Yeah. Thank you so much for all you have given to this program over the past couple of years. That'll do it for us here from the Cat Eye Network. For our Cat Eye Network director, Eugene Robinson, the rest of our Cat Eye crew, Victoria Semetti, Sabrina Petit Holm, and Bryce Hoynoski on site here in Birmingham, Larry Steele is our producer back in the WELE studios in Daytona Beach and also halftime show host as well. Henson White alongside me all season yeah. in the broadcast booth. It's been a pleasure calling games with you, my friend. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. My name is Michael Torello. Thank you so much for joining us this season. VCU sports are not over. Baseball and softball start conference play this weekend. We'll be back home and covering all the action on the Cat Eye Network going forward. But for basketball season, that's it for us. And hail Wildcats. <laughs>